Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good day to Dr. Uh, to Prof. Kayu. So today, um, my partner and me with metric number 1626140 and 1621302 will be presenting on the portrayal of Malaysian Chinese in Mr. Tang's book, the short story uh, by Shirley, Shirley Gyoklin Lim. So uh, our presentation will be further divided in four uh, parts which are on the author's profile, the setting, the characters and practices. So uh, we decided to have author's profile in our parts because we believe that we are all influenced by the world around us and uh, we have and have unique individual experiences that affect our personality. So in the same way, uh, uh, an author is influenced by her past when she writes. So a gender, race and socioeconomic status also have a huge impact on uh, her writing. So therefore, uh, we think that the more you know about the author, the better you can understand the messages central um, to his uh, to her bod body of work. So in this short story, the author is uh, Shirley Go Lim Lin Lim, which uh, born in 1944 in Malacca, Malaysia. So uh, Lim was one of the ten children that her father. Uh, had has and her father had six children with her mother and then went off to marry another woman and had four more children so she went through parental violence but also lived in poverty and had to deal with a mother living in uh, leaving the family so in a way that uh, her struggle is uh, the struggle has influenced the, the plot in this story, in this short story. Next, um, in the setting, we can see that uh, it is uh, located in Malaysia after the occupation of Japan because it focuses on poverty and destitution. Um, this, uh, the poverty uh, because of the aftermath of independence uh, because of uh, Japanese occupation and the communist insurgency in the 40s and 50s. So during the Japanese occupation, the locals, especially the Chinese, were cruelly and brutally treated by the Japanese as the MPAJ, uh, uh, or known uh, as Mal Malayan People's Anti-Japanese Army, was led by Chinese. So, uh, but then after after the occupation of uh, Japan, they also once again have to fight for Chinese equality in Malaya, as Malaya is going towards uh, independence. So uh, that's about the occupation of Japan. The next one is how uh, they live in Kuala Lumpur, a city in Malaysia. Uh, because uh, of the excerpt of every Friday, he drove down to Kuala Lumpur where his first wife and children live. Um, so the other wife of Mr. Mr. Tang or Akong uh, lives out of city. Out of city. So um, last but not least in the setting, um, in the early of the story, it, uh, Kim Lee was um, waiting to go to picnic at Tanjong Bedera. Tanjong is a Malay word and the etymology of Tanjong is a Malay, uh, a Malay word, cape, uh, headland, promontory. So it is the land that extended towards the, the sea, extended more than other lands that uh, towards the sea so people have people are most likely to have picnic there and uh, to play with water uh, to to play at the beach so it this 
this has portrayed how uh, Malaysian um, geographical geographic. <laughs> Sorry. Next, uh, in the characters, also uh, had portrayed have portrayed the Malaysia, uh, Chinese Malaysia Malaysian uh, culture because uh, first the main characters are all are uh, all in Chinese in the second house household. So the first uh, is the Chinese family name which is passed down from a father to all his children. So the other two or one part of the name, uh, name form is uh, an indivisible Chinese given name. So uh, it may, may contain a generation name, but then uh, it depends on the parents. So um, for Wanda and Jason, they are considered as the Chinese Malaysian Christian, which prefer Western name. So uh, some Chinese uh, use a Western personal name, uh, most, which most are of these are used by Chinese Malaysian Christians or Chinese who prim primarily speak English. So in the in their name, oh sorry, in their name. Um, there is no formal system of romanization is imposed on Chinese names in Malaysia uh, at the time of birth registration. So their names are often roman romanized. romanized. So uh, as we can see, it is spelled as K-I-M-L-I, so Kim Lee. But then if the Chinese that is from the, is from the mainland, the, their names will be on uh, presented through Chinese characters. So um, next, uh, Ah Kong was described by Kim Mi as a capable China-born Chinese educated worker and only speaks Chinese. So the Chinese essence is repeated here so it can portray a real Chinese man Ah Kong is. So, uh, Ah Kong has two wives, which in Chinese culture, only the wealthy are able to obtain the se a second wife. And it's the second wives also known as mistresses and have their own duties. But then in this story, it's just, she is actually is just a mistress uh, to Ah Kong. Um, Last but not least, the submissive wife that is portrayed through the mother. It can be seen from the excerpt uh, of you No, know, his wife has always submissive, a good woman who could never suggest an immodest action. This happened, this excerpt can be uh, taken, it was taken from uh, when the story, when Kim Lee dress immodestly and act immodestly so uh, he was comparing Kim Lee with her, uh, with her mother so in ancient Chinese culture um, the the role of the of women was largely restricted to their homes so they were expected to be modest they were expected to be uh, to be taking care of their, their children and uh, doing all the house chores. This is why Ah Kong is comparing Kim Lee to her mother. So, uh, it is because Kim Lee is the portrayal of her mother. This is uh, the submissive wife is also a portrayal of Ma Malaysian um, society where wife should be submissive to the husband. So, um, in characters. Uh, uh, for the explanations will be explained by my partner in uh, in next slides. Thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and a very good morning everyone. My name is Nur Ashkili Kiazai. So I will be taking the remaining parts of the presentation. Uh, I would like to add to what my partner has explained earlier, which on the submissive wife of Mr. Tang. 
the mother. Um, this actually displays patriarchy that is inherent in Malaysian society. And it also shows the hegemonic domestic division of labor because um, the father is always the breadwinner and the mother is always the housewife. And this is supported by the characters in the short story which are defined through gender stereotypes in a family institution. Generally, we can see that men are expected to provide for their family and women needs to need to serve their husbands and fathers. And it is interesting to note that um, how Mr. Tang is a businessman and he actually has a mistress and the mistress is living with them as a servant, which is Ashi. And uh, this is a very common practice among Chinese businessmen. And uh, the wives are expected to accept this because they are economically dependent on their husbands and how gender stereotypes fit in the society is that um, in it is seen through the um, advices that they give they give to Kim Lee when she, because she is getting married so she needs to be the a good wife to her husband. Um, Oh, other than that, the portrayal of Malaysian culture, Malaysian Chinese culture in the short story can be seen through the practices that are apparent in the story itself. So the first one is fortune telling. Mr. Tang and his family seek the fortune teller about the best date for Kim Lee's marriage. And this is um, based on page 167, which was the date the fortune teller had selected as propitious for the couple. Uh, this is important in the culture of the Chinese in Malaysia because they believe that um, the date, the, the, there's uh, an accurate date for one to be married so that they can uh, avoid bad luck and also to ensure compatibility, happiness, harmony and also good health. And this is determined by seeing or assessing their four pillars of destiny. It is a conceptual understanding of a person's birth time on the Chinese lunar solar calendar uh, that actually describes her fate or his fate. And Chinese believe that when a person is born, uh, their fate has already been mapped out. So they need to find the right person uh, for them to get married so they can ensure a good life. The next practice is religion. From this short story, the author actually has highlighted the predominant religion of Malaysian Chinese, which are Buddhism and Christianity. And um, Buddhism is seen as the second large, the second large uh, religion in Malaysia, parallel to the uh, how Chinese is the second large race also in Malaysia. And this is based on page 165, where the members of the Methodist Church in uh, the girls are attending describe Akong as being so Chinese. And Akong was also described as pagan, which is old fashioned. So Akong is Buddhist, and the rest of his family are Christians. Mm. Oh, and I would like to note that it is okay for them to adopt both. Uh, Christianity and Buddhism because actually it is rare that for any Malaysian Chinese to be an absolute followers of a particular belief. So um, Mr. Tang, Mr. Tang's household is a very common, uh, ado adopted a very common belief uh, which is both Buddhism and Christianity. The next practice is arranged marriage. Kim Lee, one of Mr. Tang's daughters, is arranged to marry Chan Kao, an employee of her father. Mm, this is based on one, page 166 and 167. He didn't tell her he was planning to find a husband for Kim Lee and would she inform Kim Lee and have her available for a wedding in July the next month. Um, this is important and significant um, for the Chinese because they wanted the best partner for their child. And this is, this is uh, to protect the lineage uh, and the part of the family. So arranged marriage is um, very common in Asia 
to be to generalize and so it's also common in the Chinese culture and other than that uh, we can see that um, the household of Mr. Tang actually practice Eastern values which are modesty, respect, virtue. Um, this, for, um, this can be seen through some instances. For example, the first one, how dare you come to the table like a half naked slide? This is when Kim Lee, the first child, the first daughter of the second household, uh, came to the dinner table uh, while, while wearing indecent clothes and Ah Kong or Mr. Tang was angry and scolded her because she was being disrespectful uh, on the food on the table at the food on the table and the second instance is uh, you mustn't spoil the match by acting in western manner this is this is what the mother said to the to Kim Lee also Kim Lee because she was so she was requesting to see her future husband before the marriage and her mother said you shouldn't do this because it we need to be modest as as a woman we sh we should have self respect and we should we need to be modest and um not uh not do things that are in line with western manner we can also say that the portrayal of Malaysian Chinese culture in the short story uh, shows that um, the Chinese in Malaysia actually value traditions the most because um, this is how this is also um, this has the same example with the previous point which is uh, in an arranged marriage the woman doesn't see the man to the day of the wedding and the man cannot go out with the woman until they marry. So it, it is about Kimli wanting to see Chan Kao, her future husband. And there is, the, this actually created um, a certain kind of tension and clash of traditions between the old generation and also the new one, which can be seen through um, Mr. Tang and his wife against their daughters. Last but not least, uh, Chinese in Malaysia are portrayed as being good in business and also dominating the um, business field and they are backed up by western educated sons and daughters um, we can we we know that mr tang actually has a fishing business or some sort because he has a clock and then he has a machinery and then he was talking about um jason his eldest son who was absent from the office and then Wanda, who is actually maybe uh, studying in Melbourne. So these are the common practices or com common thing among, among Chinese uh, in Malaysia to have their daughter being set or uh, our sons being sent to the overseas so that when they got back, they can inherit the company. So um, that is all how like um the that is how the author portray ma portrays Malaysian Chinese culture in her short story. So um summarizing the whole presentation, there are three ways how the author three ways Malaysian Chinese culture is portrayed in this in this short story, which are the settings, which um, which the author describes the place, the, the vibe of the settings. And then the second one is on the characters, how the character behave, behaves, how the characters think, how, what, is the, what is the religion of the characters. And also the last one is on the practices of the characters in the story, which actually reflects the culture of Malaysian Chinese uh, in Mr. Tang's girls. So I think that's all for our presentation today. Thank you for listening.